In this video, Paul from Shore is going to help us walk through the process of uh, researching, purchasing, and, and even just understanding the installation process for wireless microphone systems. They can be very overwhelming, but Paul is going to clarify this process for us. So, so walk us through. If I'm, if I'm a worship leader, I want to buy a few wireless units for my church, maybe a couple vocal mics, a couple pastor microphones. Where do I begin and how does, how does it work? Yeah, so a lot of times the first question is, is well, we need six channels of wireless uh, and we want to spend X number of dollars. Um, those are all valid points and very good questions, but not the best place to start. Uh, so the best place to start is where are you located? And then the second question is, how many channels do you need? So for those, we have two very good tools for you to use, one of them being the wireless frequency finder. So give me a place. So we're going to say Melbourne, Florida. Melbourne, Florida. So Melbourne, Florida. And let's say we'll start with BLX and look and see. And you go, OK, you needed six channels of wireless. You can get potentially eight with the J11 band. Now, I personally like to make sure that I have plenty of backup channels for it. So I try not to go, oh, I need six, six channels. Let's go with H9 because I can get six. You might get six. <laughs> this is based on what, we, what is known for local TV interference, but we can't anticipate what local interference they may, they may, there may be. Uh, in your area. Uh, so I always try to have a few extra channels more than, than that. So BLX is kind of cut kind of cutting it close. So then we can go up to the next level and say SLXD. Okay, now we have 22 and G58. So that's a much better fit because it gives you plenty of channels, but maybe, okay, you, you, you get six channels this year but then maybe you decide to expand your band or expand into more than one room and now you need more wireless channels, you know that you can get into the G58 band with SLXD and you'll be able to have some room to grow for that. So that's why the most important questions that you can ask at the beginning on picking a system is where are you and how many do you need? And you can use the wireless uh, frequency finder to help narrow down, okay, BLX, probably is not going to work. Let's move up to SLXD. Now, so is that, that's one thing, a question I have about the different models of systems. So usually the, the higher budget systems, more channels are going to be available? Right. Okay. So, and the reason why, so the higher, um, the higher price the system going from SLXD to QLXD, ULXD, up into Axiom Digital, um, the number of channels available to you changes. Part of that is based on the technology uh, of that system, uh, but then a lot of times it's because of the frequency band. Um, it has a, just a bigger frequency band, so BLX has uh, a smaller frequency band than SLXD, so it's able to get more channels, but it's also a digital system versus an analog system, so that also helps with adding more channels to that. Uh, the frequency bands for GLXD and, or QLXD and ULXD are much wider than SLXD, which is why you're able to get more channels. And Axiant Digital covers the entire spectrum from 470 up to 600 plus, so you're able to get way more. So if we were to increase that and say, let's move up to ULXD. So now we go from 22 channels with SLXD to 39 channels with ULXD in G50. If we were good to add up to Accent Digital, then that's going to take it up to 84. Now these are all conservatives. These are not set in stone. Uh, these are actually kind of conservative levels. You might be able to get more uh, than what these are. Um, but if you expand, if you expand this out, then it'll show you what those frequencies are for tuning purposes. So it can give you an idea of, of what, what frequencies to tune to uh, for that area. Now, I always recommend that people do a local scan and sync, again, because this is just known issues with TV channels, that kind of thing. Uh, so I always recommend that people do a, a local scan to find what, what the best channels are in their area. Um, but you can also use this tool for 
PSM 300, 900, 1000 inner inner systems to be able to look and see. So if you have a band who's like, okay, well, now we've got our wireless microphones, but we're wanting to switch from wedges um, or maybe the personal mixers to an inner system. You know, what's the best system for us to get? You start with the PSM 300. Okay, you can get 15 channels uh, with PSM 300 and G20. You know, so that's enough. Now, a lot of well, a lot of times, what people don't think about when it comes to wireless uh, in ears uh, is they think, oh, well, we have six people in the band, um, we need six systems. Possibly, <laughs> it also all depends on uh, your board. Uh, so the board that you have at front of house, how many aux mix buses do you have available to create different channels, uh, mixes, and how many outputs do you have? Uh, so you may be, okay, well, we have six outputs, we have six mixes. Those are six mono mixes. Because if you're going to do stereo, then you'd have to have 12 mix buses and 12 outputs. Uh, so if you're going to end up doing six mono, then you can actually do that with three transmitters, three transmitters and two belt packs. So you can set it up so that you could have two belt packs receivers with one transmitter uh, and you have mono uh, mix one going into one, mono mix two going into two, and then you can set up the belt pack uh, to be in mono so that you're just referencing uh, either one of those mixes. Uh, so you can actually fit six uh, in-ear uh, mixes on three transmitters with six belt packs. So that's, it'll be mono, yeah. But it is one of those things. So if you get into it and be like, maybe maybe the worship leader is in stereo and everybody else is in mono, you know, so then you can divide it up and do it that way. So that's why we sell uh, in-ear systems with a single transmitter receiver or a single transmitter and two receiving belt packs. So we sell those in a twin pack for that express purpose of those times when you need a dual mono system. Yeah, that's it. that can save quite a bit of money. Quite a bit of money. Yes. Yeah, and it and it helps cut back on on frequencies. You know, so when you're looking at this and going, okay, well that's 15, you're fitting two mono mixes on one frequency channel. Uh, so that can really help cut back on uh, on the number of channel transmitting channels that you have going on. So now once you decide uh, what system is that you are going to use. Then you can come to the wireless accessory wizard. Now the nice thing about this is that you can come down and say, okay, well, we decided to go with the SLXD, but we're gonna get the dual because we know we're gonna get six channels of it. And so you can get uh, a dual pack, so it's two, uh, two per rack. And so we're gonna get three of those because they're dual, so that gives us our six channels. We're gonna rack mount it either side stage or at the front of house booth. And maybe we're gonna set up some remote antennas. So now the accessory wizard shows you, okay, I'm getting three dual systems so I can get my six channels. Here's how the system hooks up. And here's the extra components that I need. I need a five-way active antenna splitter, two 10-foot ca cables, and antennas. And then it shows you how all that stuff is hooked up. Um, or you can come up and go to, say maybe you wanna do some directional antennas, and it shows you which type of directional antenna to use and how to set it up. So those are two tools that we offer to kind of help you narrow down what system to buy and then what accessories you need uh, to make that system work and how it hooks up. Unpack the importance of those antennas and the, the combiners right. or splitters and, and all those. Like, why is that important? A lot of people just think about the wireless system and the mic. Right. They forget about the antennas and yeah. then they're gonna run into some issues. Right, so all of our systems uh, come with um, an antenna. So we're not gonna sell you a system and not give you an antenna. Uh, to work with. Sometimes, most of the time, it's going to be a half-wave antenna like this, 
Uh, sometimes it might be a shorter uh, quarter wave antenna. Uh, these are omnidirectional antennas, uh, so you can kind of set them up anywhere and walk around and it's going to pick up. A lot of times what, the, what mistakes people use is, is they think that, oh, I have to point the antenna out to the stage. Uh, and that's actually incorrect uh, because the null rejection point is actually on the tip. <laughs> so when people think omnidirectional, they think like a microphone where it's, it just broadcasts 360 in all directions. That's not actually accurate. So with these, it, it is omni, but it's more like a donut. So it broadcasts 360 this way, not this way. Uh, so a lot of times people will, will point it thinking I need to point, point the antenna at the stage. No, we want it pointed this way, it's off to the side. Usually at you know, a 45 degree angle you know, to each other like that. Um, these are really good if you're gonna be, I would say within 100 feet. Uh, so if you're a small church, you don't have a very large auditorium, um, then you can put these up at front of house um, and you're gonna be perfect for that. Uh, one downside to it is that because it's omnidirectional, it will pick up any interference that's coming into the building. Um, so maybe you say, for example, you know, you're facing your stage and it's to the north, but you've got some TV channels, some TV towers that are broadcasting maybe some stuff that's coming in from the south. These are going to pick up any of that local interference uh, with that. With uh, the directional antennas, like the fin here, uh, it's more of a, a cardioid shape, uh, like a microphone. Uh, so it's going to reject any uh, interference that's coming in from the back of the antenna, and it's going to be focused just on the front. You know, but these have a very wide field. Uh, I want to say they're about 110, 120 degree coverage pattern, um, and they're better for larger auditoriums. So if you, if maybe say for example your front of house is up in the booth, up in the uh, balcony. Uh, and it's a little bit further away, then having a directional antenna uh, would be better uh, than, the Omni, than the Omni antenna. Um, and those are, two, those are our two antenna options. Now, if you're uh, on site at the stage, you know, then you'd want to make sure that they're positioned properly. Um, another common mistake that a lot of people make is putting the transmitting antenna for their in-ear system right next to the receiving antenna for their wireless microphone system. <laughs> uh, and so anytime you put antennas within close proximity to each other, we call this an antenna farm if they don't have a distribution system, and you've got a whole bunch of antennas closely uh, connected to each other, then that can disrupt the pickup pattern of the antenna. Uh, it can potentially add noise or just create interference into the system. And then people are like, well, you know, I have, it says I can do six channels of wireless, but you know we're getting dropouts and blah, 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 because they didn't get the distribution system. And so they're using a bunch of antennas, and that's what's creating, uh, creating that problem. Uh, so anytime I say whenever you're having a wireless microphone system with an in-ear system, it's good to space those antennas uh, out. Um, you can have them in the same rack, that's fine, uh, but maybe just remote one of those antennas uh, out a little bit of ways so that they're not creating, right, so that they're not uh, creating interference with each other. Uh, so an another thing that always comes up when <laughs> people mount their antennas is an antenna is very simply just an electrical conductor, right? The longer the antenna, the, um, the more frequencies it can actually uh, absorb and conduct. Not, absorb is not the right word. Uh, so anything else that's an electrical conductor that is in the path from uh, transmitter to receiver will also take in those radio frequencies, right? So people uh, tend to be electrical conductors. So that's why uh, Paul just talked about having a bunch of people in the way of the receiver. We're, what, what do we call it, salt water bags? <laughs> Pe people are salt water bags. And the problem with salt water is that it conducts electricity, right? Likewise, if you take these antennas and you put them in the back of the rack over here, you're putting a, pretty much a metal shield in between the transmitter and the receiver. Uh, and Metal is metal, metal will absorb, is a conductor, and it'll absorb radio frequencies just as easily as anything else, and 
create all sorts of problems. These tools that you're using, do we have to call a Sure rep to be able to access this website? You don't. If you go to sure.com and go to support, online software tools, it's right there. So you have free access to this, um, or you can contact uh, lo your local retailer uh, for some help with this, uh, especially here at Sweetwater. Uh, all of our sales engineers know to <laughs> to use these tool tools as well. So if you're not comfortable with using it, your sales engineer will know how to use it. Um, and I'm here. I'm uh, the in-house Sure's in-house rep here at Sweetwater, and uh, so I'm here to assist the sales engineers uh, with anything they need. Thanks, guys. So many great tips in this video. Guys, check out down below links to all the Shore gear that we're talking about. You can pick it up at Sweetwater. And like they said, talk to your sales rep at Sweetwater if you have any questions.